How much money should you invest in stocks? This question has been asked by many, and today we aim to provide a comprehensive answer. Investing, you see, is not just about stashing money away. It's about growing that money, multiplying it, and letting it work for you. It's the secret sauce to building wealth over time, the key to unlocking financial freedom. But how much to invest in stocks? Ah, there lies the rub. There is no magic number, no one-size-fits-all answer to this question. It's a personal decision that depends on your financial situation, your risk tolerance, and your long-term goals. Some may invest a small percentage of their savings, while others might go all in. Investing in stocks is not a gamble. It's a strategic move, a calculated risk that when done right can pay off handsomely. To understand this better, we will explore some real-life case studies. Meet John, a conservative investor who prefers to minimize risks. John's approach to investing is a cautious one. He believes in the old adage, don't put all your eggs in one basket. As such, he allocates a smaller portion of his income to stocks, and he focuses primarily on blue chip companies. These blue chip companies are well established with a history of reliable and consistent performance. They are often leaders in their sectors, boasting a national or even global presence. Think of companies like Microsoft, Johnson & Johnson, or Procter & Gamble. These are the types of stocks that John includes in his portfolio. This strategy works well for John because it aligns with his conservative nature. He's not looking for quick, overnight success in the stock market. Instead, he's playing the long game. He is patient and comfortable with slow and steady growth. But let's talk about the pros of John's strategy. The primary advantage is the minimized risk. Investing in these blue-chip stocks brings a level of stability that can weather economic downturns. They often provide regular dividends, which can be a consistent source of income for John. However, every coin has two sides and so does John's investment strategy. The downside of investing conservatively like John is that the potential for high returns is limited. Blue chip stocks are unlikely to double or triple in value in a short period, unlike some high risk, high reward stocks. Moreover, focusing on a smaller portion of income for investing also means that the overall growth of John's portfolio will be slower. It might take him longer to reach his financial goals compared to someone who invests a larger portion of their income. In conclusion, John's strategy is a reflection of his personality and his financial goals. It's a low-risk strategy, suitable for those who value stability and consistency over high returns. John's strategy is a low-risk one, but the potential for high returns is also limited. It's a reminder that in investing, as in life, there's no one-size-fits-all solution. It all depends on your risk tolerance, financial goals, and personal circumstances. Now let's consider Lisa, an aggressive investor who isn't afraid to take risks. Lisa is the kind of investor who likes to live on the edge. With a high-risk appetite, she dedicates a significant portion of her income to a diversified portfolio of stocks. It's not unusual for Lisa to invest in high-risk, high-reward options. She's not only looking to build wealth, but she is also chasing the thrill of the investment game. Lisa's strategy is akin to sailing on the high seas during a storm. It's a risky proposition, but if navigated well, it can yield substantial rewards. By diversifying her portfolio, Lisa spreads her investments across a variety of stocks, which helps to mitigate some of the risks involved. This approach is akin to not putting all her eggs in one basket. But what does this mean in terms of pros and cons? On the upside, Lisa's strategy has the potential to generate significant returns. When her chosen stocks perform well, she stands to gain a lot. Her portfolio's value can skyrocket, providing her with a substantial return on her investments. This approach can be particularly beneficial during a bull market, when stock prices are generally on the rise. However, this strategy isn't without its downsides. The high-risk nature of Lisa's investments means that she could also face substantial losses. Just as a bull market can lead to significant gains, a bear market can be devastating. If the stocks she's invested in perform poorly, she could lose a significant portion, if not all, of her investment. Moreover, Lisa's aggressive investment strategy can lead to high levels of stress. The constant fluctuations in the market can be nerve-wracking, and not everyone has the temperament to handle such volatility. It takes a certain kind of investor to weather the highs and lows without losing sleep. Despite the risks, Lisa finds this approach to investing exhilarating. She understands that the potential for high returns comes with a level of risk, and she's willing to accept that. For Lisa, the thrill of potentially striking it rich outweighs the fear of potential losses. 
Lisa's strategy carries more risk but the potential for returns is much higher. Finally, we have Alex, a balanced investor who falls somewhere in between John and Lisa. Alex is someone who likes to keep his feet in both boats, conservative and aggressive when it comes to investing. He's neither a daredevil like Lisa, nor a play-it-safe person like John. Instead, he walks a middle path, creating a portfolio that's as diverse as his interests. Alex's strategy involves investing a moderate portion of his income in a mix of conservative and aggressive stocks. He doesn't put all his eggs in one basket. Instead, he spreads them out, investing in blue-chip stocks that have a reputation for stability and reliability, and also in smaller, high-growth companies that have the potential to skyrocket. This approach has its advantages. For one, it allows Alex to enjoy the best of both worlds. He has the security of knowing that a significant portion of his investment is tied up in stable, reliable stocks. These are his safety net, the stocks that will likely hold steady even when the market fluctuates. At the same time, he also has the thrill of investing in high-growth stocks that could potentially offer substantial returns. However, this strategy is not without its downsides. While it does offer a balance of risk and reward, it also requires a great deal of research and monitoring. Alex has to stay updated about the performance of a wide range of stocks, and that can be time-consuming. Also, the returns from his conservative stocks may not be as high as those from his aggressive ones, which means he may miss out on some potentially lucrative opportunities. But Alex is okay with that. He knows that investing is not just about chasing the highest returns, it's also about managing risk. And for him, this balanced approach works. He's comfortable with the level of risk he's taking and the potential returns he could get. In the end, Alex's strategy is a balanced one, offering a moderate level of risk and potential returns. It may not be as exciting as Lisa's or as safe as John's, but for Alex, it's just right. So, are you a John, a Lisa, or an Alex? Let's dive into the heart of the matter, shall we? When it comes to investing, it's not just about the numbers and the market trends, it's also about you. Yes, you heard that right. Your risk tolerance, financial goals, and investment personality play a crucial role in shaping your investment strategy, especially when deciding how much to put into stocks. Think of it as a journey. You wouldn't embark on a trip without first considering your destination, the route, and your mode of transport, would you? In the same way, understanding your investment personality is like having a roadmap for your financial journey. Risk tolerance is the first stop on this roadmap. Are you a daredevil who loves the thrill of the ride or do you prefer the slow, steady path? Your risk tolerance will dictate whether you're comfortable with the volatile highs and lows of stock investing or whether you'd rather stick to safer, more predictable investments. Next up, your financial goals. Are you saving for a comfortable retirement, a dream home, your child's education, or perhaps a once-in-a-lifetime vacation? Knowing what you're investing for can help you determine how much you should put into stocks. If your goal is years away, you might be able to afford to take more risks. If it's just around the corner, perhaps a conservative approach is better. Lastly, your investment personality. This is a blend of your risk tolerance and financial goals, sprinkled with your personal beliefs about money and investing. Are you a John who prefers to play it safe? A Lisa who's not afraid to take calculated risks? or an Alex who likes a balanced approach. Each type of investor has a place in the stock market. What matters is that you invest in a way that aligns with your personality, your comfort level with risk, and your financial goals. Knowing your investment personality can help you make informed decisions about your stock investments. So, are you ready to discover which investor you are? So, how much money should you invest in stocks? This is a question as individual as you are. We've journeyed through the stories of the conservative, the aggressive, and the balanced investor, each with their unique approach to stock investing. The conservative investor showed us the value of caution, investing a smaller portion of their income in stocks for stability. The aggressive investor, on the other hand, demonstrated a riskier strategy, investing a larger chunk of their income in stocks with the potential for higher returns. Our balanced investor found a middle ground, investing a moderate amount for a blend of stability and growth. We've also discovered the importance of understanding your investment personality. Your risk tolerance, financial goals, and timeline are all critical factors to consider when deciding how much to invest in stocks. Remember, investing in stocks is a personal journey. It's not about how much you invest, but how wisely you invest. 
Stay informed, stay patient, and let your money work for you.